Okay, hello, welcome back to another video. Today we are taking this knight and putting it on f6 as we play Ali Ekin's defense in response to e4. Uh, 2175 at the moment, so we're gonna we're gonna play d5, sorry, in response to knight c3. But 2175 uh, pushing towards that 2200 goal, and this move e5 here. Now a lot of people are kind of scared of this. What you should do is not go anywhere extravagant with your knight. Just step back, nice and calm to uh, to d7 if you're gonna play this system. Now it looks like this pawn hangs. But it of course doesn't because of course we could then just take on e5 um, and generally what you'll see is d4 e6 and then something similar to maybe f4 c5 and you end up uh, with a french maybe knight f3 instead of f4 or you see e6 uh, we obviously have to take that but it's definitely an interesting move weakening this diagonal uh here to the king and also meaning that we can't really push the um e7 pawn and so our bishop won't be able to get active this way which means that I think I think a good idea is to play g6 and bishop g7 very quickly. I mean g6 as well, kind of cutting down on any um, any any queen h5 shenanigans. So I will go g6. I think a priority is get this bishop here. Um, there we go, g6. Now there is kind of a problem if um, bishop takes g6, pawn takes g6, queen takes g6. That is a threat. So we might see queen g4. My opponent is just going ultra aggressive. Wow. Okay. I mean, I rate it. I like it. But I'm just going to play e5. And if you let me play e4, then I don't think that's a good idea. And now I can take with the knight. And my position's kind of opening back up. I've got the mobility again. I mean, my knight's held by the bishop. I've got a lovely bishop here. And is this that scary? I mean, I can just take the bishop. A yeah, take with queen, but then I go bishop f5. Okay. This looks like a good idea. Bishop f5, hit the queen. This is obviously held. We've got two extremely active bishops. We don't even have to castle uh, kingside under this incoming pressure on the h-file. We can just go knight c6, queen e7, and castle queenside. So I think... Interesting. If I go knight c6, I see this move. And am I scared? I don't know, but if I go c6 and I see this move, then I'm a little more scared. And if I go queen d7 and see this move, then I'm not having a great time. I mean, I have to go like queen c6 there. Okay, so we're gonna go knight c6, I believe. Is this a good idea? I'm not entirely sure if this is a good idea. Yeah, you know what, send it. We'll develop the pieces. They're gonna take on b7, of course, destabilizing this knight uh, and threatening to take it, but I can play knight to d4, threatening this fork here, um, which looks quite appetizing, if I'm, if I'm being honest. I could also take this and double the pawns, um, but I think that just restricts where my knight can go and also gives up a pretty strong bishop here. So we're going to go for knight d4. Obviously, the rook is held by the queen. That's all fine. Rook b8 as well, potentially coming. Um, and my king, I mean, we're not really going to have anywhere very pleasant to castle, but maybe maybe a bit of kingside and then after takes, come back with the bishop and just, you know, hide behind those snipers there. Because uh, right now, I don't know what white does about the pressure on c2. There's no light square bishop to defend that square. Neither of the knights can access that square. Neither of the rooks can, and the bishop can't. So, I guess you move the king? But that can't be a good idea. I mean, you don't want to move the king into this into this d-file. Especially, I could just take with the bishop. I could even still take uh, with the knight, and after the rook goes here, have some discovery onto the rook. So, we've got a super active position here. And my opponent's gone in you know, for a, for a little pawn grab. Um, and I think I think it might be a bit greedy, honestly, because they've not moved their other pieces. Whereas we've got some lovely minor pieces, uh, very active minor pieces as well. So yeah, kind of, kind of intrigued as to how this one plays out. If my opponent does go for King D1, is that really the best thing? Is that the best idea I can come up with for my opponent? Because it actually might be. And if that's the case, oh no, okay. Interesting idea here is, I guess, this pawn. So knight takes this pawn is good because it comes with tempo on here, actually. Knight takes this pawn. I take here with check. I guess you go in here and, like, check here. Knight here is forced. I'm not exactly sure because I need to find a way to deal with that. I guess I could just go bishop e5 afterwards, though. Okay, so, okay, if we do see, I mean, if we see queen takes on d5, then just queen takes, uh, knight takes, 
and check here is going to be very good. And then after the king moves, we can deal with the problem on c7. Maybe just castling, actually. Allowing to take on c7 and then rook c8. Um, and we just have some super active position with like a potential discovery for the rook on b1. Sorry, I mean, my opponent's thinking for quite a while, so I'm going for some quite some quite tenuous, um, you know, preemptive analysis here. But hopefully you guys could track a lot of that. Uh, it, it is it is really hard. I mean, my opponent's spending their time probably because they're in a very dire position. Uh, there might be some interesting moves, but I mean, you can't even go queen b3. I just take it. Um, and so it's, it's not looking great, honestly. Because, okay, we see it right now. This is where I go here. Fine. Absolutely fine. King comes up, which is interesting. Did not really expect that. Um, huh. If I just castle here, what happens? Because then my king is kind of safe. I mean, it's not really, because, like, why is this? But my opponent's king is so weak. And I don't want to allow this with check. I don't really have to allow this at all, but a, rook like, a move like uh, rook c8, sorry, just seems overly defensive. So, you know what? I'm, set. I'm just going to castle. I'm literally just castling. Have this pawn, if you if you so wish. Queen can't take this pawn, of course, because we just take the knight. Um, I'm going to take back here with bishop. I think I think that makes a lot of sense. We open the f file as well, which is quite helpful. And we've got these we've got these beautiful bishops. Um, this is obviously held. If knight takes here, I mean, surely my opponent's getting mated in that case. Yeah, literally. Look, we just go queen d3, and that's checkmate on the spot. Wow. Okay, this is this is awesome. Look, they have not developed their pieces. You've got to use your pieces in the game of chess. Do you know what I mean? Like you can't you can't get away with this kind of shenanigans, going after pawns, going after you know weak ideas. I mean, I completely forgot even that this rook is still hanging. I mean, I could have probably gotten away with um, knight takes rook there, but then after pawn takes here, bishop takes. My king's a lot less guarded, a lot more exposed. Um, and this knight, I mean, this knight might even be better placed here, controlling some squares. Um, so, who knows? My opponent is still thinking, and I mean, fair play to them, because I, I don't know what I would do in this position. We could, uh, what is that? Okay, so of course I can take the, the rook here, and if takes, takes. Well, here we seem to be like just up a rook. Um, there's gotta be something a bit more exciting though. Like, can I just throw rook into f2 somehow? Funny thing is, I probably could. Check. Where does the king go? This isn't a good idea, but it would be really funny if I could, if I could get away with it. Check here. I think there's just too much to calculate. There's too many squares for the king to go to. Bishop d4. Let's say, what looks like the most resilient move? I mean, if we see king f1. Oh, there's not going to be any queen f1 because the bishop holds here. So this is probably a bit of a waste of time calculating that. Right, you know what? We're going to just take the rook here. Um, trade that off. We're just up a rook now. Bishop is actually like super solid here. Um... This knight is just hanging in midair. Like, obviously, the queen is protecting it, but now they take this. But that's not a good move. Because check. And check, mate. Wow. Checkmate there with the knight. Awesome, awesome stuff. What an attacking game. Let's look at the analysis. Okay, so here we are in the analysis now. e4, knight f6, uh, knight c3, d5, e5, knight d7. All very, very standard, and usually, as I was saying, you'd see something like d4, e6, maybe f4, uh, c5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b3. Uh, this is called the Boleslavsky French, I believe, maybe queen b6 here. But a very, very standard French-type game. Um, that is almost always the pawn structure that results from this position. However, my opponent, of course, hits me with e6, uh, which is an awesome move, because after takes, you see the evaluations about 0.0, which by no means means it's drawing, it just means that there's sort of like equal winning chances 
um, for either side. So, D4 here. I should have gone for C5 straight away, trying to break on that side of the board. Um, however, I went for G6, which it says is like the exact same. So, I'm going to say that was the best move. Um, Bishop D3 here. Bishop G6. And yeah, it just it really wants me to play C5 to get this side of the board moving. But I was just thinking, I mean... You know, the, my opponent being this aggressive, I just wanted to make sure that I was uh, I wasn't going to get punished on the king side. But then, yeah, I find the best move, um, e5, and after my opponent takes, I should have gone straight for d4. But knight takes, still kind of strong. I mean, I just wanted a way to get out of this opening um, and not be in a really cramped position. And so by this position, I was feeling pretty confident. Um, and after my opponent pushed the pawn, I don't think it ever got better from here. I mean, knight takes bishop perfect. Um, it wanted pawn takes, but after queen takes, I just play bishop f5. Checks the best idea. Knight c6, best move blocking. Um, but here, I was right. Takes, that is a poisoned pawn. And knight d4, the best response to this. Um, I was right that my opponent should have just moved their king. I was wrong about the direction they should have done it in, uh, to be fair. But they're just dead lost after picking up this pawn. This is exactly why you have to use your pieces. I mean, it's not exactly rocket science. The game of chess... You have to use your pieces to checkmate the opponent's king. Now, if that information doesn't learn, uh, doesn't earn rather a subscribe, I don't know what will. Um, but yeah, the knight here, the pressure on c2, it's all too much. My opponent plays knight takes here, um, and I should have gone for rook b8. I think the engine will really like rook b8, actually. I didn't even consider rook b8. That was a bit of a blind spot for me. I was trying to attack my minor pieces, but knight takes here. Slightly inaccurate, but still completely winning. So, you know, my kind of general rule is as long as I stay... I mean, Sotfish is just loving it even more, but as long as I stay, um, if I'm with black, uh, less than minus five, and if I'm with white, more than plus five, then I don't really mind how I convert the game. Um, and after the king comes up, no way. Castles was the best move. That's awesome. Um, and after my opponent takes here, um, again, I should have gone for rook b8, but bishop takes here, still fine. Bishop here, I picked up uh, the rook. Yeah, again, rook b8, but I picked up the rook here recaptured this and yeah my opponent takes here and we see we see that checkmate i mentioned the idea of the checkmate earlier and um, while the knight was still here that if they move the knight then i could just go queen d3 checkmate straight away but obviously we move the knight knight um c7 and then just queen d3 it goes back and we get to deliver a beautiful checkmate with the knight the knight hitting the king uh, on e1 there and the queen controlling these other squares so yeah just an awesome attacking game really my opponent Tried to attack me really quickly with an uh, with a you know slightly dubious sacrifice on e6, um, although it wasn't even that bad. But then yeah, this idea of h4, h5 too early, I just punished it with my pieces. Wow. Okay. Great game. Thank you very very much for watching. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, I'd really appreciate a like, subscribe, comment, any kind of interaction that you can give me uh, will really help grow the channel, which is of course what I'm trying to do here on YouTube. Thank you very much for watching, uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.